Hello everybody and a very warm welcome back to Tony Northeastern and I hope you're all keeping safe and well and uh, here we are another episode of me messing around with trains well not strictly true because I'm in the process of building the roof as you know but um, we're having a little break from that this morning um, when I premiered the video last week um, I had some comments saying oh you've got a driverless train and I made a little joke about it saying yeah they're very hard to come by well it just so happens that um, I popped into my local model shop this morning and woe behold I've never seen so many locomotive staff just hanging around on shelves so I decided to um, give them jobs so the the staff I'm on about is the Backman double O gauge um, figures um, but before I start gluing them in I just want to show you inside the cab as you can see I've I've been tinkering I've just highlighted the pipes there with a little bit of a bronze paint just to um, give them that copper look and uh, highlighted the gauges with a bit of white paint as well uh, I don't normally do that but um, this back, old Batman loco had no detail whatsoever inside so I just thought I'd quickly paint that before I stick this little fella in there now what I tend to do with these figures is I tend to take the paint off the bottom of the feet so that they do grip the uh, locomotive rather than um, just the paint because uh, if they come undone they leave the paint behind and I've just dipped his feet into some super glue but uh, trying to get him to stand in the right place is going to be tricky because um, as you can see he's waving so I want to put his arm outside the window if I can and what I had to do with this figure is I had to cut his arm off and then re-glue his arm back on um, this arm here if I can show you this arm was up in the air as if though he was trying to wipe the gauge so what I'm going to do is just kind of see if I can stick him in here with his hand outside the window without trying to get too much super glue onto the um, base of the cab on the floor so he's just going to stand there with his arm out the window hopefully he'll stay put without falling over let's get him on his feet, that'll do there you go, he's waving a out of the window there, you can just see his little arm poking out I haven't made too mess of the cab floor, well, what I might do is before I put the oh, he's, he's got a hold now, he's really got a hold now, so yeah, so so, yeah, so that's, that's him, and the other guy I've got, he's got a shovel and I've just painted a little bit of coal on the shovel, I don't know if you can see that one turn them round let's see if the camera will focus on it probably not there you go so I've just painted a little bit of coal on the on the shovel and he's just going to stand alongside him dipping his feet in some super glue and I'm going to stick him just about there now the thing is letting go will he, will he, he's, not, he's not doing it I think he was quite happy on the show, he didn't want to come to work this morning. So we'll see, we'll just leave that there. Come on, that's it. He's there. Now well, there we go. It's a perfect shot of him there. See if we can just zoom in a bit. He's just got the shovel just about right. Oh. 
Right, so from one locomotive to another. The latest addition to the Northeastern Railway is a Great Western locomotive. Yes, you're probably all thinking, well, it was never anywhere near the Northeast. Well, yeah, you're right, it wasn't. But um, when Rails of Sheffield announced that they were going to build this locomotive, and just because of the strangeness of the shape and everything, I just um. I just ordered one and um, here it is long at last and I'll tell you what the detail is phenomenal um, I do like the way it looks it's a what I would call a beautiful ugly duckling <laughs> if there's such a thing but yeah what I did notice uh, when I got it out of the box, one of the handrails was loose. Um, so just a tiny, tiny amount of silver glue and stuck it back in. Um, what I found the hardest was fitting these um, chain links in the front there on the buffer beam and the two exhaust pipes. Um, I had to open them up with a 0.8 drill bit. Uh, just to get them to fit. If you look closely you can see where I've taken the paint off the chain trying to get them in but don't, I'm not worried about that. Um, I managed to get them in and I do like to add a little bit of detail to the locomotive because it comes with a locomotive and it's well it's not free but I like to try and add it. It did come with some other pipes which go underneath but I thought no I'm not going to fit them. But there we have it. Um, what can I say about it? Um, I just, <laughs> I just like the look of it. Um, they didn't have a very good reputation. Um, I know that much because uh, I just read the the history of it, and um, they've got one of these down at Didcot. I uh, like to go and have a look at it at some point. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to go on to. Um, any more details other than um, there's a parcel train stuck at Shields it's been up there for a couple of weeks I think it's about time we um, moved it out of there so I'll send this up to remove it
hope you enjoyed that little bit of a, a running session. And uh, I tell you what I have noticed, which is unusual, is the squarish type buffer stop beams there. Hmm. Right, I think it's time we got back on with the build, don't you? The next thing we're going to do with the roof is start fitting the glazing and I have made a start already and we've got the first piece in, it's just lying there at the moment, it's not glued in or anything. Um, I think the idea is, is I'll glue and glaze it down that edge and then I'll um, glue and glaze it in a few points and then just rest it in there. And then once the glazing is in, I'm just going to cover up the tie-ins for the trusses with this little bit of 2mm by 2mm right angle. Then we can start gluing in the bars this way. You'll see as we go along. That's the plan. You're probably wondering what I'm using for the glazing. Well, when I first built the layout, I kept all the packaging because this would make great glazing. I kept it mainly for New Hustle roof if I ever decided to to do that roof. So all it is is the packaging from the points. So so I've kept all that. For doing this job. So all I'm doing is I've run a bit of glue and glaze down that edge and just picking out each corner and like I said earlier the right angles will tie the glazing permanently when I come to do that. And you probably notice some shiny bits here and here. It's where I've cut the solder back because um, it was a bit proud and uh, just used an old blade for doing that. I have now added the middle section of glazing which starts from there and finishes there and um, I have now glued the first 2mm by 2mm right angle Now the right angle I'm using is 0 0.80 here yeah, four pieces in a packet so if I do the same along the bottom of this edge it hides any unnecessary gaps it hides the joint and then there that looks like it's, it's almost there we have moved on a little bit uh, all the glazing is now done on this side of the roof and what I'm doing now is putting the last piece of a right angle 2 mil right angle in between here and here which hides the glazing joints and the actual tie-in that we used to make the roof to start with um, Yes, the, the glazing has been a little bit tricky to say the least. Uh, I had uh, at least four attempts on this curve here where I kept cutting too much out uh, even though I pre-measured it. But um, at least from now on it'll all be straight cuts. I mean this curve in the roof has been 
bane of the whole build. Um, but it adds character and we're keeping in with the original um, build as it were. So I've just trimmed this to the limb so I'm just checking it to make sure that it's a tight fit. And yeah, that's a lovely fit. So what we do now is put some super glue on the inside of this right angle and hopefully it'll tie in with that. So far there's been no ghosting on the glazing because um, we're going onto this tie-in rather than onto the glass which is good. So far so good. So now we've come to the end of fitting the glazing I'm just putting in the final section. Um, it has been interesting cutting out all the individual shapes because uh, no two panels are the same. This centre section as you can see is curved and I've had to notch it to go around the joining tabs as it were when we first did the trusses all those weeks ago. So here we are, the last piece of glass. That should just slot in there nicely. Well, it did earlier. Now. Right, so the next thing to do is to fit in the angles to lock the glass in, like so. So now that we've done the 2.5 right angle for the glazing for this tie in here I'm using 1.5 um, right angle but the only trouble is where we've got the joiners for the tie ins I'm going to have to file that back to get rid of the square edge to allow the angle to sit onto the tie in and therefore not creating a hump. As you can see I've already done it this side you can actually see the brass um, channel that I used to join the roof sections together. So hopefully now that that's filed down this will sit on there without creating a bump but as you can see we still have an issue of gap but uh, I've got a cunning plan for that later on when we come to do the detailing on this area here. We're now well underway um, adding the framing to the glazing. As you can see here I've added some 2mm a meter wide plastic strip which is 0.25 thick. It's quite thin and it just covers up these trusses and here what I have have a small example of how the windows should finish up but when we look at this photograph you can see the window framing here quite clearly as we have three down um, struts as it were and then one coming across so that's what I'm going to try and repeat here so once we get all these in and then all these little narrow ones in between three in between each panel and then we'll uh, see where we go there we probably need 
an additional two millimeter piece to go straight across the middle of all of it to give us the six panels per frame as it were to stick these strips onto the glaze and I'm using some super glue for just some cheap super glue and I'm only putting it on very very thinly and if you look closely it evaporates so I'm just smearing it on there and I'm just waiting for it to evaporate so it's just a cling clear film on there of super glue so as you can see it's just slowly evaporating now I've only stuck it on half of the strip I'm just lining it up with the top there and make sure it's going to cover the truss before I release it and I just let it drop in place now because I've only done half of it I need still need to do the other half so with a very very small amount on my toothpick I just lift up the bit that hasn't got any glue on and then just rub that backwards and forwards just try and not to touch the glazing Just leave that for a couple of seconds and then press it on. And hopefully you can't see the truss, which is good. So that's how I'm gluing them on. And so far I've done all these back here. And I've done all these here and so far there's no ghosting coming from the strips at all. is good the progress so far is I have now made a start on the cladding using some 0.8 round plastic strip um, rodding to create a detail on the cladding as well as I'm going along and at this end here I put some little tie-in strips Here and here. Uh, I'm not going to do it all the way along. So from then onwards, I'll just miss one, do one, miss one, and do one, sort of like that. Uh, same with the top there and the bottom there, and that kind of matches what's on the other canopy. So let me just show you what's on the other canopy. And here is how the other canopy looks. So it's going to look similar to this one in style. So I'm going to try and repeat that on Big Brother's roof next door. Well, we've come a long way this week, but I fear that we've only just touched on with the glazing. I mean, the, the other canopy was a smaller canopy probably a third of the size of this large roof and that took me at least a couple of weeks just to do the glazing so we're probably looking at a few more weeks just gluing these strips on and then we've got to glue on the strips going across these strips as well to form the glazed panels as it were so uh, I think before we go we'll have one last look at the 18,000 gas turbine I think. What do you think? Yeah we've deserved it. Till next time. Stay safe everybody. Bye for now. Bye.